St. Louis de Montfort. Louis Marie Grignan was born in the village of Montfort in Brittany on the 31st of January 1673, but spent most of his childhood at Ifendic, a small town a few miles away. At the age of 12 he was sent to the Jesuit College of St. Thomas Becket at Trans, where he remained for eight years. The assurance that he was called to the priesthood came to him when he was praying before the statue of Our Lady in the Carmelite Church at Trans, and unexpectedly an opportunity was offered to him to study in Paris. So at the age of 20 he set off for the capital, walking the whole 200 miles as an expression of the poverty he had joyfully embraced. He gave away all the money he had to beggars, as well as the new suit he had received. Then, kneeling down in the road, he resolved never to possess anything of his own but to rely entirely on the loving providence of his Heavenly Father. He began his studies at St. Sulpice and attended the University of Paris. Among many gifted and devout students, he was outstanding both for his intellectual abilities and for the holiness of his life. After his ordination in 1700 his great desire was to go to the foreign missions, preferably to the new French colony of Canada, but his spiritual director advised against it, and he chose a life of missionary work in France. All was not well with the French church of his day. What especially troubled Father de Montfort was the lack of priests to minister to the people's needs, and the widespread ignorance of the faith. A short experience in the parishes caused him to write to his director, Seeing the needs of the church, I cannot help praying continually for a small society of poor priests who, under the protection of the Virgin Mary, will go from parish to parish, instructing the poor in the faith, relying solely on divine providence. That aim and desire remained with him throughout the years of his unceasing missionary work, as he walked from diocese to diocese. Because of his unconventional way of life, his outspoken condemnation of what was wrong, and his firm opposition to the erroneous doctrines of his day, he made many enemies. In fact, due to the intrigues of influential people, he was requested to leave more than one diocese and to carry on his ministry elsewhere. On account of the disapproval he met in various places, he began to wonder whether he was following the path God wanted. For him there was only one way to find out. He would go to Rome and put the matter to the Holy Father himself. As always, he traveled the thousand miles or so on foot, and on reaching Rome was able to have a private audience with the Pope. Clement XL, having heard his difficulties, assured him his vocation lay in evangelizing France, and commissioned him to continue his missionary work to catechize the children, to instruct the poor in the knowledge of their faith, and to encourage people to renew their baptismal promises, but always to work under the guidance of the diocesan authorities. He left the Holy Father his mind at rest, and endowed with the title of missionary apostolic to give authority to his teaching. There were only sixteen years between his ordination to the priesthood and his death, but they were full years. He went from parish to parish renewing the Catholic life of the west of France, preaching and instructing, providing for the poor, teaching catechism, organizing the building of shrines, renovating broken-down churches, and establishing schools. All this strenuous apostolic work, added to his long journeys always on foot, his unceasing penances, and an attempt on his life by poisoning all took their toll of his sturdy constitution. In 1716, while preaching a mission in the village of St. Laurent sur Sever, he became gravely ill. He struggled into the pulpit to give his last sermon, which was significantly on the kindness of Jesus. In the afternoon of April 28th it became evident that death was near. He kissed the crucifix and the little statue of Our Lady which he held in his hands. Then he exclaimed, In vain do you attack me, I am between Jesus and Mary. I have finished my course, all is over. I shall sin no more. Then he died peacefully. Thousands came to pay him their respects before he was buried in St. Laurent, and ever since his tomb in the parish church has been a place of pilgrimage. He was canonized by Pope Pius XII on July 20, 1947, and his feast is kept on the anniversary of his death, April 28.